a very good morning. Uh, I'm Yu Kong from Singapore General Hospital. Currently, I'm the chief resident here in the, in the hospital. And I'd like to thank the organizer for giving me this chance to explain and, uh, on my project on using artificial intelligence to look at functional urology, in particular, looking at the overactive bladder, which is a very prevalent disease that affects uh, many of the elderly patients. Okay, so as you know, uh, artificial intelligence is probably not a very new thing in uh, medicine. And uh, what I realized is that a lot of times we are using artificial intelligence in the realm of neuro-oncology, and it hasn't really been explored in functional urology. So we wanted to look at whether we can integrate AI in this aspect. And in particular, we wanted to look at a prevalent condition, which is overactive bladder. And what this study does is that it uses a machine vision learning tool to look at your schistoscopic images. And in particular, it looks at the micro movements of the blood vessels within the bladder itself as a surrogate to see whether there's any form of bladder contraction. So let's say if you have someone with completely no uh, detrusor overactivity. So as the scope moves, you can see that, let's say my two fingers are the blood vessels in the bladder. So as your scope moves, the blood vessels should move in tandem with one another. However, if someone with detrusor overactivity or detrusor contractions, what it does is that actually as your scope moves, there will be small micro movements of the, mic the blood vessels such as they actually don't, doesn't move in tandem. They will move separately away from one another. And this micro movement or micro contraction will be picked up by the micro vision software or analysis. And what we did is that we tried to look at both quantitative and qualitative analysis so we had about 20 patients, 10 of which had, uh, had neurodynamics determined detrusor contractions and 10 patients with purely no uh, overactive bladder. So what we found is that in terms of quantitative analysis, there were more times that there were micro contractions or what we call deviations between those with uh, detrusor overactivity, OAV, and those with non-OAV. And qualitatively, we also see that in terms of the deviation, the magnitude of the deviation was also greater in terms for patients with detrusor overactivity, detrusor overactivity OAV compared to those with non-OAV. The next step of the study was to look at whether the machine vision uh, tool could help us identify which areas within the bladder had these uh, concentrations of the micro contraction. And we're happy to show that they, the tool itself as a preliminary study was also able to pick up the certain areas within the bladder with all this uh, increased concentration of uh, vascular microcontractions. So I think when we look at the utility of this uh, machine vision tool, there's both the clinical aspect and also the commercial aspect. In terms of the clinical aspect, we know that the goal standard to determine uh, detrusor overactivity or detrusor contraction is actually via neurodynamic studies. But we all know that uh, from a clinical point of view, it's not always able to reproduce the symptoms that we want to see. And there's a lot of challenge because you, you, it requires a lot of feedback from the patient. And we, on the other hand, we know that cystoscopy is always performed for patients with very refractory clinical symptoms to rule out any form of infection, cystitis, cysticus, uh, uh, carcinoma in situ or bladder stone, etc., etc., and therefore we hope to use the cystoscopy as a tool to kill two birds with one stone, so we could hope potentially replace uh, cystos replace neurodynamics with cystoscopy with equally good ability to discern whether someone has significant detrusor contractions. So that's the clinical aspect. From the commercial aspect, what we really hope to achieve in the in the future is that. We wanted to test the hypothesis when, that when we talk about detrusor contractions, is it the bladder that is globally contracting or are there actually focal areas within the bladder that's actually exhibiting this form of micro contractions? And why, what, what these results will help us is that in the future, you can actually target these areas of focal, of focal micro contractions, be it Botox injections or even ablative treatments so you can maximally reduce the symptoms of the patients while minimize the complications of all these invasive therapies. Oh, 
Yeah, that's a very good question. I think the at the end of the day, OAB is a clinical diagnosis. And I, I think really the role of neurodynamic study is in those that has very refractory symptoms and you probably wanted want to do something that's more invasive, be it uh, 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 intravascular therapies or even augmentations. So in that aspect, neurodynamic study becomes crucial in getting a more definite or objective diagnosis. And I think this is the group of patients that we really wanted to target because if we are able to replace your dynamic study with just flexible cystoscopy, in that sense that patients just have to go through one of the two investigations and you can able to get the diagnosis. And subsequently, if you can even test the hypothesis that the, when you talk about the choosal uh, over contractions is the focal areas of micro contractions, then potentially you can really target these areas instead of randomly injecting or treating the bladder as a whole, whole, whole organ itself. So at this juncture, I think the, the software itself is not designed to study uh, the chooser under activity. And I think many a times the, the diagnosis of uh, Voiding symptoms can be can can be based on the bladder diary as, as well as the urophilometry, and also taking a a, a, a proper con, a detailed history. So I, I would say that at this juncture we we do not design the the software to to diagnose underactive bladder. I, I think in the pipeline there's always this possibility, but the primary focus at this juncture is still for patients with a significant overactive bladder that you really want to get the diagnosis of the, the chooser uh, hyper contractions.